people. What is good, guys? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to wherever you are in the world. What's happening? Anyone else ready to hear finally Bitcoin has broken above the zone, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Snapshot. <laughs> Do you know what, guys? Repetition is always going to leave the impression in our minds. You know, you're in a business model that repeats itself continuously. And when this business model repeats itself, the end result is money is made. Who has a problem with that? I don't think many people will have a problem repeating the ATM. You know? <laughs> All right, then, guys, just whilst we're getting ready for the live tonight, guys, tonight we're going to be talking about understanding when specific zones get rejected and when the market rejects particular points in the chart that are inducing traders to believe one thing is happening against the next. So by the end of this stream, guys, you'll have a good understanding of how to check and observe how this behavior starts to develop so that you're not caught on the wrong side of the trade, ladies and gentlemen. OK, so <laughs> snapshot. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> what a funny thing. That's made my night. Fair play to you, bro. All right, then. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to cut the music, ladies and gentlemen. Let's roll with the flavor. If you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch up with the streams that we do throughout the week. We stream twice a week. Sorry, twice a day, every single day, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And we throw in a little stream on the Friday just to make sure you guys are in line with what Bitcoin's doing. So let's have a conversation, guys. All right, then. Cool. Moami, thank you very much for that. <laughs> spiky one that's funny bitcoin is as popular as a fart in the moon boy space <laughs> man you guys are funny tonight man you guys are bringing the flavor to the stream what's good how we doing how we doing a lot of you passing through tonight wicked wicked let's have a conversation guys all right then here we go so what is it that we were trying to establish earlier on okay you see 90% of people that are following Bitcoin, the second they see a nice little move like this, all right, they kind of get their hopes up. But there are places in the chart that we've got to be aware of that if they can't break above, they're just going to end up setting traders up for failure. Earlier run in the stream, <clears throat> during the New York session, we said, in order to validate Bitcoin's move to the upside, it would need to break above the daily open and, of course, the 200 EMA. Once it would do that, it would retrace to test that this zone is valid and that this area is where they want to stay away from. And then <clears throat> Bitcoin would move higher to the upside. Man, I need to clear my throat. All right. So this is what we were working on and trying to wait and see if Bitcoin was going to do it. Yet again, they failed to do that. Well, when I say they failed, I'm talking about the market makers. They never fail. All right. It's the retail traders hopes that failed, because if you notice at the daily open, now this is why the daily open is very important, guys, because the daily open is an emotional trigger. All right. What's the first thing that you see usually on certain platforms like Crypto.com, Coinbase or CoinGecko? One of the tabs that you see on their websites, all right, and the apps is top gainers, top performers, all right? And then you have to search for the top losers, okay? The idea is, is if you see a coin that's moving up and it's trading positively, you're going to go to that coin and say, you know what, why am I missing out on this move to the upside? Look at Theta. It's like up 5%. People are going to come to the charts and say, oh, look, man, it's trading higher. I want to get involved in that. They'll take that narrative, look at the chart and they'll say, oh, my days, look at that. I'm missing out on this move to the upside. People will start going long there. OK. But the problem we've got with that is we've missed out on the move. Yeah. See, when Theta was trading below, as we saw earlier today. All right. No one was paying attention to Theta. Now, all of a sudden, Theta is moving up. It's up 5%. Happy days. People are now starting to come to Theta and then price is going to try and see a resistance at the range daily high because it would have done its move to the upside. And the traders that get caught out are the ones that go long in this area and then they end up being the product of a liquidation run 
and then the business starts all over again. Which is why I say to you guys, always, always wait for the retrace whenever price has made a move from a particular point because it's your savior in trading. The retrace is the savior in trading because it will prove to you that the move is valid. All right. Just look at every time price hits a high. OK. And there's a vector candle present. Look what happens. They put it straight back. Look at when price deviates away from the 50 EMA. Look what happens. It pulls back. These are designed to trap traders, these moves. This is not about engaging in a moon boy status and getting excited. It's about understanding why are they trying to move higher at speed? If they're going to move higher at speed, okay, the retrace back down should stabilize at this point and price will continue back up if the intention is to move higher. Well, look what happened here. The second theta makes the move to the upside. It retraces, but then it continues down lower. Look at Bitcoin. Puts it into perspective. You've got this move towards the daily open. Traders got excited when Bitcoin broke the daily open. Bitcoin's trading positive. Happy days. Let's get involved. Drop down the lower time frames and you'll see it starting to develop. <coughs> Excuse me. Look what happened here. Big push to the upside. Now, as pattern watchers, okay, we would have been able to take advantage of this little play right here. Okay, price moves away from the moving average. It makes its way towards the daily open. And then a blue vector candle appears up here, stopping volume candle, fails to break above this zone right here. And then they just reverse it. FTD trade right there, fool the dealer, and then price drops to the downside. As we were saying in the stream earlier on today, we need clean confirmation. If you feel like you're missing out on Bitcoin's pumps, well, you ain't really making money if you're actually going long in this area and in this area. Your liquidation points is where the market maker wants to go. You've got to ask yourself, why are we seeing big green candlesticks to the upside and price always pulls back? So that leads on to the next concept, the whole and the half numbers. Look at what they've done at the 42,000 zone. Now, this concept is the market maker likes to build positions in and around whole and half numbers. OK, so we've got 42,000 right here and you can see that they build their shorts above this zone so they can get the highest possible fill on their shorts so that when they decide to make the run to the downside, the way they get their shorts filled is by inducing traders to believe that price is going higher. So the guys that are going long are installing liquidation points in this range, this area, this area, this area, all in this area right here are liquidations. OK, if you want to see that true, look at this high block, high block shows you where the potential liquidation points are in the chart. So if we zoom into high block, you can see, look at this, look at all these areas here. This is where long liquidation zones are. And they've just been bringing price down, hitting those liquidation points. These red dots is where people have gone short. Look what happened there. People went short in this zone. Price reverses, hits their liquidations, then they continue down lower. And then they did it again. And now they've hit this zone right here. Longs have been built in this area with this green um, bubble right here. Now we're waiting to see if they're going to actually release and drop price to the downside and attack all these pools of liquidity. Okay. So how can we avoid this sort of play, ladies and gentlemen? How can we set ourselves up and say, you know what? I'm going to be patient and I'm going to wait to see for true confirmation. OK, so the first thing here is this. When they're trying to break above the daily open, you want to wait for conviction that they're coming away from that zone. So price always needs to break above the daily open, make an attempt away from it and then come back down to test it. OK. Now, look at what's gone on here. If you watch the video earlier on that I've done for the channel talking about the pivot points. Well, M1 pivot goes all the way up to the M3 pivot. All right. But it rejects that zone and they hit this zone twice. So they did it in the Asian session. They brought price back down to the M1 and then they moved all the way up again to the M3. And that acted as a solid resistance zone. Yeah. The 800 EMA acting as a resistance point. The New York Brinks acting as a resistance, initiating a stop hunt rise, and then they reverse price to the downside. Now, you know what? If this seems to be some, somewhat repetition, you know, so I'm repeating too much. Then, guys, like, like I said to you, this is trading. 
The whole point is to be able to find a system that's going to allow you to exploit the market because the marketplace does not change. It's just they do it at a different price. That's the truth. They do this at a different price. If it's at 41,000, they'll do the same at 50,000. Look at what they did here, all right? We've got price coming up towards, we've had the 200 EMA up here and it's acted as a resistance point, all right? Well, let's go back in time to when they did the same thing at the 200 EMA. Look what's going on here. Same story here, same story here, 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 and here. Yeah? They can't change the business model because people always behave the same way. They get excited when price is rising, they buy. They become fearful when price is dropping, they sell. In each of those instances, the market maker is going to go long when it's dropping and he's going to go short when it's rising because this is how they trap liquidity. As it stands right now, ladies and gentlemen, the whole chart right here is showing that there are pretty much an even distribution of longs and shorts liquidation zones. However, the delta is implying that there are more liquid, short liquidations in the chart. There's $1.1 billion worth of short liquidation points. Okay, there's a lot of money for them to grab. At the same time, we have $1.74 billion worth of longs that they can also attack. Now, they have been attacking these liquidity zones. So that's not the final figure. So which are they going to go for first? Because Bitcoin right now is stuck in this range, ladies and gentlemen. All they've done today is they faked out traders. If you're, if you're trying to establish how to read as to whether or not a move is going to be real or not, you pull up the one hour time frame. What's the moving average doing? Look at how price is. It's gone up. It's pulled back down. It's gone back up. It's jagged. All right. There's no smoothness in the 50 EMA. So you're going to be waiting for confirmation that they are going to try and move higher. OK. Drop onto the 15 minute time frame and you're going to see the same thing. Look at this, 50 EMAs all over the place. The 200 is exactly the same. The 800 is near enough pretty flat. There's no direction just yet. They are working the range. Is this the point in the chart, ladies and gentlemen, that they are going to come away from? Because the behavior of the market maker in this area right here is consistent with building positions. We are waiting to establish if Bitcoin is going to release and come down and hit these zones of liquidity. Are they going to take back the wick? And are they going to release down towards the 38k zone? Which leads me on to the book map. The book map is showing still. Here we go. So it's actually dropped and it increased as well. It went down to 325 and now it's gone back to 329. 329 Bitcoins orders at 40k. 313 at 38,000 and 195 at 39 based on the way price is moving and it, the fact that it's trading below the psychological low. Now, this is really important, guys. The four hour is showing clean rejections of the 50 and, of course, the psychological low area. They may favor lower prices. So come tonight or tomorrow, if Bitcoin all of a sudden decides to spike up to the upside, proceed with caution, guys, because they've got the habit of doing so. Spike price up, let it trail up, let the retail trader have his day, and then they bring it back down again. All right? When price is not doing much, all we can do is focus on every single movement that they make and establish if it's going to be false or not. And the way we do that is we work on the key areas in the chart. For example, psychological low, daily open, M pivots, yesterday's low, range daily low, range daily high. In my opinion, if Bitcoin can hold this range, it would be consistent with the development of a big W formation. Now, all I'm waiting for Bitcoin to do is just to come away from this range. That's all I'm looking for it to do. If it can't do that, I'm going to go short. That's the basis of it all. In one stream, I'm favoring one direction. In another stream, I'm looking at another direction. I don't have a fixed bias to price action. We can be all optimistic about Bitcoin's purpose. Yeah, okay, Bitcoin to 100K, happy days. 
But when we're dealing with real time and day trading systems, okay, we have to be prepared to cut the bias and accept if it's going to go up and go down. Where is the momentum favoring price? Where is it? Is it favoring higher movement or is it favoring lower movement? And we just need to try and understand how to exploit that. All right. Are we all on the same page here, guys? Shadow, do I avoid making trades until direction has been established? You have to understand, all right? I'm a short-term day trader. I'll hold a trade for five minutes. I'll hold a trade for two hours. I'll hold a trade for six hours. Tops, all right? I have, you know, I start at half eight in the morning, look at the charts, and if I can get anything from half eight all the way through until 10 p.m. at night, I'll be placing trades in that window. After 10 p.m., I'm done. I could be in a negative position. Or I could be in a profitable position. I will close my trades because I ain't going to go sleep and leave the market maker to have some fun with my liquidity. No, thank you. All right. Now, if I'm holding trades for a longer term plays, it means I'm not using leverage. So I'm comfortable just sitting through whatever they do overnight. But when you're trading leverage, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be on your A game and you need to be watching what they are doing because you can get instances like today where they initiate a trap to the upside and you could get a little bit happy, probably start adding positions, thinking that you're going to go to bed and they're not going to make, you know, they're not going to move down after this big move. Well, look what happened. Behind every green vector candle you see in the chart, guys, in this area right here, Bitcoin has come back down towards it. That is telling me that the market maker is preparing for a very interesting move. OK, is he building shorts above the key 42K zone to release them to the downside or is he preparing to go long? All right. By trying to force price lower by sending it higher to bring it back down again. All right. If you're trying to establish where Bitcoin's going to go in light of the hybrid system, you need to understand what time frame are you basing it off. You see me, I jump in between different time frames. I cater for the guys who are holders, day traders, or should I say, you know, um, position traders, swing traders, where we refer to the daily time frame. Look at the daily chart. It's all over the place. You got wicks to the downside, wicks to the upside. They are working this range. It's trading below the 50 EMA, below the 5 and the 13 EMA. It's screaming potentially to try and come back down to this next point of interest in the chart. But it's a matter of when they decide to do so. Are they going to try and hit this zone first before they come down? Or are they just going to try and break away from this range before they actually come back down again? What's it going to do? Because when they're trading sideways, they're in consolidation mode. Traders are getting impatient. People want to make sense of direction and they open trades and then they get caught in this sort of area right here where you've got liquidation zones above and below price. And it's the market makers, free for all, gravy train, happy days movement. And he's just going to keep spiking price up and down, taking liquid liquidation zones like $41 million worth of longs right there being could be liquidated. You've got 58 down there. You've got 40 one yeah same same orders right there sorry so guys went long in that area there's their liquidation zones you've got shorts up here at 30 million i mean guys like it's crazy there's 737 million dollars worth of shorts in this zone you know so the market maker's got a free-for-all he doesn't care about what bitcoin should be priced at and neither should you guys the price of bitcoin is irrelevant all you need to care about is the journey that price is going to take towards certain zones of liquidity. Are they going to move price up towards this zone or are they going to move it down to this zone? Is the relationship of the book map of orders, is it going to be engineered to move price down lower or are they going to move price higher? This is all we hunt for, guys. We want momentum. I don't care about Bitcoin's price. Now, I know there are people that do care about Bitcoin because as a holder, some, some of you guys may be value investors as well. You might think that Bitcoin is still expensive and you might expect it to drop down a little bit more to effectively buy it back up again at 30K or 20K or whatever they think that Bitcoin should end up at. All right. You're looking for momentum. You can find that momentum on the one hour time frame when price deviates away from the 50 EMA. Are you going to look to try and exploit that and trade back towards the 50? You drop them to the 15 minute time frame. Are you looking for volatility away from the 50 and the 200? Make the decision. Be accountable for what it is you're trying to understand. Five minute time frame. Just look at this. Look at these two M formations on the five minute time frame. They, there's M's and W's all over the place. Look at that. M formation drop. 
And then you've got another one. Look how they spike the daily open. Vector candles coming into the chart. You've got one zone, two, three hits to the high. Failure to break above the, two, the, the daily open and contain above the M3 pivot zone. They drop price aggressively. They make one last attempt at the daily open to solidify the longs to the upside. Bang, they reverse it. And now look at what we're doing. We're just dropping down ever so slowly. Okay. Let's have a look at Ethereum, guys. Okay, so Ethereum on the higher time frames. One hour time frame, just drifting slowly. Now, this is good, guys. All right? Because when everyone's losing their mind, all right, this is where we are preparing ourselves for a potential play. If and only if Ethereum can hold this range again bitcoin sorry ethereum will need to show shifting out of the zone if they're going to come away from this zone they're going to come away with aggression and the moment they move away aggressively wait for the retrace continuation up because that aggression will then be continued in this area because there's only a certain amount of time that they can move price up for before they need to pull it back look what happened over here look at that they move price to the upside they stabilize is there intention in the move? Yes, there is. They shift out of the zone. This is all you're looking for. You're looking for these plays. Rise, retrace, continuation to the upside. That's all we're looking for, guys. And if you don't like the sound of that, then trading's not for you. Simple. All right? Let's have a look at some altcoins. I'm not interested in top winners. I'm looking at the ones that have pulled back. So let's have a look at Harmony. All right, so Harmony's pulled all the way back. So this could be a turning point for Harmony. Be mindful of, because it likes to trade below the 800 EMA on the one hour time frame. So we could now get a potential change in direction with Harmony if they are done with this behavior. Okay, so if you notice here, we have got rise M formation up here. Price comes down, they do another W formation in this range and shift out of the zone. Big M formation up here, drop FTD, come back down, re uh, reject the psychological range, drop it down again, reject the 50 and the daily open, drop it down, retrace back up to 13 EMA, and now they're sat at the 800 EMA. Tonight, start of a new trading session. We've got Sydney starting in 10 minutes time. And then we've got the new daily candle opening in two hours is going to pretty much determine if we are going to see one try and make an attempt back up. OK. Someone is talking about. USDT. Here we go. Yearn finance. Let's have a look at this bad boy. OK, then. Oh, my days. Wow. Wow. Man, look at that. That's ranging hard, that is. See, this is accumulation. If we zoom out, I mean, look, it's no clear definitive direction. It's all over the place. Let's go on the higher time frames. Let me just look at the 12-hour chart. What have we got here? Even on the 12-hour chart, it looks absolutely horrible. Look at this. This is just literally hunting for liquidity. That's what these guys are doing. Look at this price action right here, guys. Flat. 50 is flat, 200 is flat, 800 EMA is flat. There's absolutely nothing happening with this coin. And the problem is every time it does break away from a zone, it comes straight back down again. With the exception of this area here. This must have been a news play. So keep an eye out on this coin. If it starts to trend, okay, then there's a good chance it's going to keep trending. But if it, I mean, looking at it right now, it's, it's sad days for this coin, man. It's just stuck in this range. If Bitcoin, I would want Bitcoin to do this and the altcoins to then start making some big gains. That's what I would want. All right. That would be the ideal scenario. Let's have a look at Coty. Coty again, quite sharp price action. And you can see they've got a nice W formation in within an M formation in this zone. But look at how quick they come back up. They're now coming back down towards the 50 EMA. So for, in essence, if we're going to see Coty come up, they would need to hold this 50 EMA and 200 EMA zone. And they would likely try and come towards the 60 cent zone where the liquidity is. And we've also got previous vectors, sorry, wicks in the chart right here that they may try and come back up towards if they hold this range. Because the 250 are starting to get flat. So are they going to base out from this W formation or are they going to come down, test the zone and make the retrace back up? 
continuation back towards the upside if the intention is there because they're holding at the 800 and the 50 and the 200 EMA. All right. News play. Play was the news that news. They were buying back their tokens. Fair enough. All right. Can you do link? I'll have a look at link for you. Yeah. Um, let me have a look at link. Link, 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 link. There you go. Link. All right. So now look, we've got the same. I'll tell you what. Here we go. Let's do this again. Let's do this again for my guys. Here we go. This is where we are right now with the altcoins so that you guys can understand what to do. Pull up the one hour time frame on the market cap for the altcoins. Okay. Now, this is where you will know where you stand with altcoins. As it stands, the majority of altcoins are trading below the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame. Any altcoins that are trading above the 50 EMA, that's going to give you insight that there's strength behind those coins. Okay, so let's have a look at Loop Ring. Loop Ring uh, is trying to come away from the 50 EMA, but it's been in a markdown phase for quite some time. So we are expecting this to at least come back up and take back some of these zones of liquidity because the shorts are so exhausted in this area. There's liquidation zones for the market maker to come back and attack. All right, Alice, ah, big wick to Alice testing the eight, the 50 EMA. So that's what we saw on the total market cap. Luna, ah, difference. Now Luna is coming away from its 50 EMA. As we said last night, this is a good thing because these coins that are trading against the overall pack of altcoins, especially in the total market cap, these are going to be the ones that make the move higher. So you can see we've got a nice W formation right here. All Luna needs to do is just keep trading towards the upside so that it can activate the, the psychological low. When it gets to that point, there will always, always be a little bit of a consolidation at this point because this is the zone where they hit the previous pools of liquidity and they always like to pull back from those ranges so that they can avoid the imbalance in the order book. And then if it holds true, the 50 EMA will marry up towards the upside. The 200 EMA will cross back down below the, eight, the 50 EMA and they will make the move higher towards the $90 mark and come away from the psychological range. You notice when I said to you earlier this week, uh, sorry, it was earlier on today, that the sooner they trade away from the psychological ranges, they have the rest of the week to, in essence, bring price back into the fray. The fray is the range that the market maker started his spread. He started his positions from. So he's going to make his money as he drops it, and he's going to bring price back into that same zone so that he can start the whole process again. Okay? Are we good with that? VRA. Let's have a look at Fanta, um, MTV. You want me to have a look at MTV? Is that even a coin? It is a coin. Oh, my days. All right. Quite a cheap coin. Trades nicely, though. Coming up towards the 50 EMA. Fair enough. 200 and 800 EMA. Fair play. But it's a little bit sporadic, this coin. Seems to have this habit of doing damage in and around the 800 EMA. So be mindful because we've got liquidity down here. And they're not shy to come away from the range. The same pattern is developing. Look at that. You've got this M formation up here, FTD trade right there. And then, of course, you've got this one right here. So that could be the case with MTV. So just multivac, whatever it is. So that's pretty interesting. Let me have a look at render token. Render token still struggling at the 50 EMA. I just want to try and find coins above the eight, the 50 EMA. Kai's not doing anything. GRT, nothing. Ren. not trading above the 50 EMA. Engine coin, not above the 50 or not. No, rejecting it. If anything, BNB, what's BNB doing? Trying to come back up, sort of trying to come away from the 50 EMA. That's a that's a that's good news. If it can hold this range, then we're likely to see BNB by the end of the week try and come towards the psychological low or finish in that range. SLP still below the 50 EMA. Can you have a look at Alf on Q coin? Aleph, what is that? What is this? Aleph USDT. Fair enough. 70 cents. Okay. Oh, here we go. Our first coin that we can see above the 50 EMA. What's this about? There's some big pushes with this coin. Very big pushes. Is this a new coin? 
must be a new coin just i needed to check something on the book map they've added a 30 here we go it was 302 i think it was and now they've added 322 so we've just had another 22 bitcoins go in at 38k guys so we need to be mindful of that all right let me just get this back up again so this coin how old is it okay so it's quite a recent coin no maybe not tell a lie why is it running so slow kills my computer man here we go all right then hmm approaching all-time highs fair enough seems like a promise it's trading upwards happy days looks like it's um, adoption uh, um adoptive stages you know people talking about it people are buying it which is what explains these big pumps to the upside so i would wait at least a few a few days or so or weeks even to really work out its trend worthy behavior okay of course, Ethereum pulling back down. XRP, let's have a look at XRP trading down towards the 800 EMA on the daily time frame. And we are witnessing a little bit of movement back up, but nothing substantial. Bitcoin right there, Trias. Nothing there. Not seeing any growth on that. I've yet to find another coin. Crow. Crow still trading below the 50 EMA axis. Not doing so good. ALBT. Have a look at Ava. I'll have a look at that in a second. Nikon. Nothing. Zilliqa. No. Mana. What's Mana doing? All these top coins that are performing so well ain't doing anything. XLM still trading below the 50. I haven't seen any coins just yet that are actually showing promise above it. Let's have a look at Ave. Everyone's going mad for Ave. All right, here we go. Is that going above the 50? No, but it's currently developing this big pattern, guys currently in this pattern so let's see if they can hold the range because look 50s flat 800 flat 200s flat they've obscured price and moved the moving averages sharply so that's not a consistent move i want to see nice smooth move to the upside all right man you guys are going crazy let me just keep keep posting your coins so that i can just have a quick glance and then work out if we're going to talk about them or not time here we go time's doing well staying above this zone but it's likely to try and come back down into this range right here so we've got to be cautious with that because it is trading below the 50 ema if it does come back down at least a retracement of this zone to bring price into this range right here and then it's at this point we will likely see them try and formulate a pattern so that they can keep in line with the gains that they achieved from this move to the upside all right rose that's one coin i am going to look at rose here we go is Rose doing any good? Again, nice little crossover by the 50 into the 200 EMA. Everything seems to be just trading flat, in my honest opinion, guys. And it looks like it's all down to Bitcoin. But Rose looks like it trades really well. For the long-term players, you can see we've got a nice W formation down here. Big W play. Rise, level 1. Rise, level 2. Expect to rise, level 3. Peak formation at 60 cents or so above 60 cents that would be the ideal scenario for this pattern to come into fruition all right let me look at carver um gala let's have a look at gala i'm just going to pull up random coins and have a conversation about them guys so just keep doing that with the chat nothing on gala phantom phantom is look see here's this w formation with phantom they may even initiate a third hit to the low Okay, so just keep an eye out on Phantom because we're waiting for vectors to appear in that range. Look, we spoke about Phantom yesterday. Need to see vectors. This is one of the vectors that came into the zone, but it was a fake move. All right. So by tonight, guys, because tomorrow we're going into the midweek in crypto. So by principle, we should see a reversal at some point tomorrow because price action itself is showing that behavior. It's showing that it could potentially try and reverse if it holds this zone. That's all we're looking for. If it can hold this zone, then it's happy days. If it can't, then we're still going to see Bitcoin drop down lower. Remember, Wix. Wix, man. They're not shy. Okay? They won't hesitate. If they can see there's liquidity in that range, they will bring price back down towards it. Okay? So, where does that leave you guys? 
Well, guys, look at it. For momentum traders, you need to ask yourself one thing. Where's price? Below the 50 EMA? Yes. Below the 200 EMA? Yes. Below the daily open for the session? Yes. Are there any pools of liquidity nearby? Yes. Where's it coming away from? A weekly pattern? Correct. M formation, drop level one, drop level two. Expecting a lower move to the downside? Is there a reason for them to move price down lower? Of course there is. At the same time, there's a reason for them to move price higher. What you guys want to try and do is try and capitalize on deviations away from the 50 EMA. I won't tell you when to enter. I won't tell you when to exit. But I'm going to give you a very good idea on how to understand the behavior of price action so that you can be accountable for your decisions. That's what this game is all about. Okay? Mad love and respect to every single one of you people for passing through tonight. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and pin to the top of the chat is the access to these indicators. It's free of charge. You don't have to pay a single penny for them. And join the Discord as well so you can have a conversation about how to utilize these indicators because we use them all the time in the streams. All right? Mad love and respect to every single one of you people. And I will catch up with you guys tomorrow at 2 p.m. Have yourselves a wonderful evening, guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace.